from the heart of El Monte City Hall West, it's El Monte Tonight with your guest, Arturo Esparza. Tonight's special guest, Congresswoman Grace Napolitano, as well as veterans and military liaison, Hector Elizalde. And our musical entertainment, Mr. Hank Castro. And of course, our beautiful co-host, Ms. Vivian. And I'm Maggie Ramirez. Go on, Hank. Take us away. Thank you. And welcome, everyone. Here's a classic for you that's on my UCD. It's called You're Still a Young Man. Here we go. Someday you'll still understand man, just what a man baby, is when a man comes to you with his little heart in his head just to love don't you. Waste your time. Just to get up next to you and hold you. Man, oh, baby. baby, baby. Just say, I'm wasting my time. Well, it's my time. Don't baby. waste your time. You, you, you better listen to me. Say, I'm a black you. Never, 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 never
nice. Very Very nice. Good, Hank. Yeah, we're going to have Hank Castro coming back in just a bit. Welcome once again to the little show around the corner, not the block from where you live, El Mani Tonight. With yours truly, Arturo Esparza, and we have a real fantastic guest tonight. I'm just going to make a quick, couple quick announcements because that's how we do not pay our bills around here. <laughs> and, um, okay, uh, the Almani Police Department will have a 5K foot pursuit run Saturday, February 8th, 2014. It's going to be right here at 11333 Valley Boulevard. You can register at www.active.com. And you want to contact them, contact your local police department. Check-in time is at 7 and 8 p.m. Contact them, 626 Five eight zero two one zero zero, and then we have our annual soggy dog dinner and dance, <laughs> and that is at March eighth, okay, a month later, and that will be held at the Almani Moose Lodge, where our good buddy Ted Sandoval is operating. Four two four nine North Peck Road, El Monte, California nine one seven three two. You want to go down there, you get to meet the Canine Corps there and their handlers for here for the Almani Police Department. And we're very proud to have them on scene for that. So we want you guys to participate, support your local. Uh, organizations especially the first responders because they do a bang-up job okay without any further ado I've been waiting for this moment all my life <laughs> or at least for the last 20 minutes here she is herself the right honorable congresswoman Grace Napoletano 32nd district right well thank you so very much let's for hear a round of applause right. gracias uh, Arturo, it's a pleasure to be here I'm enjoying the program and some of the guests that you have in the audience uh, it's really great that El Monte services the community by giving them information about events, but also brings them a little bit of entertainment and then information, which is so critical. Oh, well, bless your heart. I want to keep her on for the rest of the season. <laughs> <laughs> She's so Invite good. me back when you want. Oh, let me tell you, we're going to invite you. To, we know we have a woman's talk show, Heart and Soul, we want to invite you to. And we have uh, right here, we got Maggie Ramirez, one of the hostesses of that episode. All right, Maggie. And Powerful show, very powerful. People love it, you know, because we're talking about uh, women's empowerment and issues that are relevant to the community. That's my game. I figured. Well, you're you're the chief. That's why. So we're not. Uh, we got some nice questions to ask, and I'm just really uh, pleased as punch to do that. So I guess I'll start with the first the first zinger here, which is, and this this could take the whole show. What committees do you sit in? I have two major committees: uh, natural resources and transportation. And on natural resources, I, I am the ranking member or co-chair, if you want, of the Water and Power, which has a jurisdiction over the 17 western states water and power, including the, oh. the um, um, Bonneville power plants and the, the PMAs, part, part marketing. But in transportation, I sit on two subcommittees, uh, actually uh, rail, water, and uh, highway, three. <coughs> They're all critical to my area. So those are really important because I get to be able to put it uh, my two cents about the needs of the, my area, whether it's uh, uh, funding coming in to do the transportation needs or whether it's uh, taking care of water, um, and especially right now with the hills being uh, touted as being uh, uh, possibly changed into uh, uh, more of the uh, a visitor um, um, friend friendly. Right. Well, I mean, where do you find the time? I, I just have to ask that. I mean, you take vitamins or super pills or... Uh, <laughs> Well, th my staff will tell you they have sometimes a little bit of a hard time trying to catch up with me because I'm, I'm all over. I come home every weekend. I try to visit businesses and schools and uh, do shows like you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Uh, well th that's how I keep in touch with people and, and asking them, what are the things that f you're finding are a necessity for your area? And that's the only way I can do it is if I come out and, and visit and sit in on council meetings or come in and speak to some of the electeds or even some of the teachers and some of the parents. That's beautiful. Let me round of applause for this young lady. Yeah. Hardest working woman in the business. Huh? And I know one of her secrets. Which is? Is that she has that Texan blood in her. <laughs> oh, is that what it is? That what it is? Yeah. Pura Tejana. Pura Tejana. It? Hey, my family's from El <laughs> Paso, so I know, I know yeah. where you're rolling yeah. them from. Yeah. You know, my dad, huh? he was a force of nature, almost like Vivian's dad. That's you know. why she's a beautiful woman. God's been good. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful lady, your mom. Oh man, I tell you, that is great. You know, I, I love reading about, about all this. Gosh, you got you got events coming up, don't you? Uh, I have good. several events, but what I wanted to go back and talk about sure. natural resources. <coughs> Excuse me. Is the um, the there is a proposition, a bill uh, called WRDA, W R R D A, which deals with funding to be able to do like dam reparation. You have two dams in our area, the Whittier Dam and the Santa Fe. And we're trying to get funding to be able to uh, capture more water because we're in a drought condition. Definitely. 
And right now, the governor's uh, uh, created uh, uh, the uh, motion to start conserving. And that's something that we need to tell the public is, all of us are responsible for, for saving water. Exactly. All of us, at home, in business, and everywhere else. And uh, there's an issue with Northern Californian water. They, they use 80% of the water for farming, and we use 20% for industrial, commercial, and residential. So we're trying to wean ourselves off of that imported water by recycling, conserving, mm -hmm. storage, ab below and above ground, uh, and educating people about the reality of what water is to our economy. Well, that's beautiful, you know, because people don't realize, you know, L.A. Basin is basically a desert. It is. See, and it a lot is. of we depend on water coming in from many, numerous sources. And I think we all, when we turn on the tap or whatever, we take it for granted and wash your car like 25 times a day. I know some friends like that that are constantly. <laughs> and, you know, and these are the little things that I, I know that... Uh, are very crucial for us to survive. Really, really crucial. Arturo, there's uh, the uh, San Gabriel Basin that is contaminated, the Superfund. Wow. There's going to be a hearing, uh, a briefing coming up, and, and staff can give you the information to uh, uh, get the public to come in and learn where we're at. It's about halfway clean, mm -hmm. but the water in there is the size of the Lake Tahoe underneath the, the earth. Wow. Been, wow. And because of the carcinogens, because of aerojet, because of fertilizers and pesticides, right, it right. is contaminated. And we've been working on this for at least, since I've been in Congress and before that, at least 16 years on cleanup. And Amazing. it's got another 16 to go, easily. Who knows what will be <laughs> next. If you need any help, we've got the, we got the band of Gabrielino Keat tribe here. So we have the chief there. There he is. So, you know, if you need some backup, they can mobilize. Right. And we're working on Indian water rights, too, making sure that they're the first water rights holders in the U.S. Beautiful. Round of applause, please. You gotta, come on. <laughs> this is just too good, too good to be true, I tell you. I, like I said, I, why should I even ask questions? You know it all. You know it all. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm still learning. I feel, like, I feel like I'm learning right here. I tell you, man, you got all kinds of stuff. Uh, let's see, you got health care reform. That's another issue that you're working on? Is that Definitely. It? Well, we've done a couple of wow. health care reform forums with uh, Senator Hernandez uh -huh. at the City of Hope, and also I brought in one of the authors of health care reform whose daughter lives out here and he comes periodically so I put them together and we invited doctors and clinics and hospitals and others to come in and get direct information what the state is doing and what the feds are doing mm -hmm. and we're going to be doing it again we just haven't set a date because I'm not sure when my, my partner in DC is available but uh, they brought in people who are trained to be able to um, register people mm -hmm. for the affordable care uh, California's ahead of the rest of the nation in not only uh, um, getting them signed up, but also in providing, uh, making sure that the insurance companies are not raising the rates. I just saw Anthem, they're, they're proposing to raise it 25 percent. Well, shame on them. We ought to go after them. Because right. people who need it are the ones who are not going to be able to afford it if they raise their rates. And that's the underinsured and the uninsured. Amazing. Wow. That's an amazing app. Yeah. I didn't even have to call that one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We're sure loving it. We're sure loving it. And you know what? So. It's just, uh, like I said, it's phenomenal that you, you find the energy, the time, and, and so much dedication. And I think the biggest thing, I know, I know Vivi and I were looking at your bio, if you didn't mind. A little just, bit. A little bit. <laughs> and I think what, it summed it up best. That if there was any catchphrase in there, that you are totally the voice of the people and representing and accessible. Thank and you. I thank you for that. Thank you. I try to be. Uh, I'm from the working class. Beautiful. I'm a high school graduate. I do not have degrees. So I know what it is to work for a living. I know what it is to have to raise children. I have five children. Well, and it is, it is, uh, uh, families are going through what I went through. So we need to understand that not everybody is born with a silver spoon in their mouth and they do need help. They need unemployment insurance. We need to extend it. Sure. They do need a lot of families immigration assistance because they don't know what they're uh, capable of getting right now. You know, and that's a lot of information. You know, there's a disconnect there. Yes. And that's what I think what we're all experiencing right now. Uh, I won't even call it misinformation because that makes it sound very malicious. I'll leave it to your imagination. But there is a disconnect. And people are, like, not aware, hey, I'm available for this. I know you do a lot of work with the veterans. I know a lot of veterans, especially the new generation coming back from the, the Middle East, they're lost. Yeah. And it's a sad commentary, very and sad. And they're coming into our, our residences and our communities, and we don't even – thank them and we don't uh, channel them into getting the services that they've earned. They, it's not that we're giving them to them, they've earned them with their blood. 
sure. and with their service to us. And we need to be ensuring that they are mentally health, healthy, and Hector can talk to you about it, but one of the things we're proposing is every returning veteran should get signed up with the VA. That's, it's not automatic, they have to do it. And then secondly, get mental health services, whether they think they need them or not, because they will be needing them in the future. That sure. Good. Isn't that great? That is a one yeah, right there. It. Yeah. It. It's critical. Well, you know what? We're going to come back because I know Vivian had a question she wanted to ask you about too as well. Uh, we're going to bring up Hank Castro because it's part of his contract. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay. And we're paying him with food. <laughs> and he'd been dying. When I told him, when I told him commercial, he jumped to it, man. This man came practically across the country. Oh, wonderful. He was following you. <laughs> I think he was. All right, Hank. Yeah, he's, all, he's all ready. I love it. Well, this is what you love about our show. Thank you very much for having this great entertainment. He's awesome. Yeah, Come on up. Don't be shy. Come on, Hank. <laughs> <laughs> Belt it out there, Hank. And by the way, we do have another entertainer that is going to be uh, performing Gilbert Stokes. In the second Stokes half. Yeah, Gilbert Stokes. The second half, so. Yeah, we have that. That's, stay, that's, just, for, that's just for Hector. <laughs> teach him a lesson. <laughs> we'll teach him a lesson. Then. Okay. Well, we'll start back there in the out-of-control room. That's what we call it, the out-of-control room. All so, right. So we do that. So we're ready to go back there if you guys are. Take him from the top. I like surprising him. We good? It's number five. I don't even know what song that is. Let <laughs> <laughs> you go. This is a live television, folks. <laughs> Okay, it's like everybody left the ship. <laughs> 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 I'll, go, I'll go back there and cue it myself. I'll be right back. They're gonna okay. That. That's now that's from Three Dog Night. It's called Eli's Coming. Oh, yeah. And remember that one? Eli's Coming, hide your heart. That was yeah. before your time. Was yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> 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 that's when no, we... We're talking about boleros and the trios. Oh, back I Back in the 50s. Yeah. That's when me and, me and Arturo were hippies back then, remember? Oh, Arturo? yeah. Oh. That was a few here. Doing all the walkouts, you know? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Some of us left. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Number five. Uh, this is from my Never Gonna Give You Up CD, and it's a beautiful love song. Uh, it's called I'll Make It Easy. That was originally recorded I'll by the Incredibles. It. I thought you never put me down It was easy for me To cheat a lie Cause I thought you never say goodbye You know it's hard, hard, hard Living without you My days are dark as night It's hard, hard, hard Do it without you Come home If you try me, 
come on home and say you'll be mine And I'll, I'll make your life easy Bring your fine I'll make it self on This is what I love about Hank. He's such a talented performer. He doesn't say die. Thank and you. He's great. I'm proud of you, buddy. And you know, we're gonna have to talk more about where you're gonna be performing next. We need to know that. I wanna know. Yeah, see, there you go. Oh, oh no, the Congress are ready to do backup. Well, March 2nd. 24 Oh, that's right. March, March 2nd. 2nd. You will be at Stevens Steakhouse. Steakhouse. Oh, I go to Stevens occasionally. Good, yes. yeah. And March 2nd, Stevens Steakhouse. And the 23rd, Miss Vivian will be performing with the band Power Play at Stevens Steakhouse. It's a Sunday. Oh, yes. good. Give yes. me the dates. If I can, I'll yes. be there. We'd love to have we you have there. We have extra tickets, so we can, uh, we'll get you in. It's a 50% off on those tickets that we have uh, well, for we'll, all those dates. We'll, we'll cover the Congress. Yeah. We'll, we'll no, just no, no. I pay my way. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that way I don't have to worry about somebody pointing the finger and say, you're on the take. See? Even for oh. a meal. So I'm telling you. See, and you, nobody you, realized. I, I meant about open, leaving the back door open. So that we <laughs> <laughs> see, we do it Boyle Heights style. That's where I grew up. You know, it was like, go to the theater, leave the door open, right? And we'll run on in. <laughs> but uh, I know Ms. Vivian was going to ask you about, uh, what did you have? Huh? I have the question on any updates on immigration reform. Um, some, yes, and they're not as, as great as I would have hoped. Uh, you know, our Hispanic caucus, there's 27 members. Uh, our lead on that is uh, Gutierrez, uh, Luis Gutierrez. He's been on it since before I got to Congress. He talks to Boehner, he talks to the Democrats, he talks to everybody, he travels all over the United States. What he is saying is that the Republicans want, and uh, they're having a retreat this weekend, hopefully they'll come up with a strategy. What they don't want is to people to have a pathway to citizenship. That's one of the things that the Tea Party doesn't want, and some of the uh, anti-immigrants mm -hmm. don't want to happen. Um, what they're looking at is doing piecemeal, making the dreamers. Well, the president's already given the presidential uh, um, um, review and allowed that to happen, but it's not law yet. And they're saying, well, we've got to make it law. The other areas is, is maybe they may want to do clam shuckers and uh, 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 agricultural workers and the chicken pluckers and those because business needs them. Well, wait a minute, how about we say no? It's got to be comprehensive because you have 12 million people in the United States that are living in fear of being deported. And the deportations have slowed down. They haven't stopped, and we want them to stop. We've been pushing with the president, pushing the, the Homeland Security, uh, especially with Janet La Napolitano before. And fortunately, that didn't happen as much as we wanted to. But we uh, have uh, thousands of organizations pushing for the full uh, reform. So we need you to have send those letters in to our Republican, the Tea Party, the, the Republican leadership. Um, the Senate passed the bill but the House doesn't want to pass it. And because they control it, we cannot get a, a bill heard. It's amazing. It's amazing. You know, it's poli political. Yeah, and I mean, but yes. I mean, seriously. Control, power. And, uh, you know, those uh, immigrations that want this reform to go and, and be in place, uh, they are supporting the economy of As You tell the them. US. You tell them. Always and, and forever they have been. And it isn't just Latinos. It is African Americans. It is uh, uh, Asian because the Tri Caucus, Hispanic, Asian, and, and, and uh, uh, Black, are working together because there's many from South America, from Africa, from Canada, from all over the world. It isn't just Latinos. We're the major part of it, but it is all kinds of folks that live in the U.S. and are always in fear of being deported. Yeah. Well, Congresswoman, Canada. Oh, yes. <laughs> I've sat next to a gentleman who told me he'd been working in the U.S. for seven years, and nobody has ever asked him. He's never had a permit. Oh, incredible. Isn't really? that incredible, folks? Can With you believe that? 
<laughs> well, they never, guys, but you know, they never build a wall between us and Canada. You know, no, it all goes down south of the border, and that's our, our fight. Why are you putting a fence over there and over there you can walk right through? Correct. Yeah, no, that's true. Correct. Let's get a round of applause for what's yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Man. This information is invaluable. I'm, sh I'm sure you had a chance to talk to Vivian's father, this distinguished oh, yes. gentleman, and a, one of the original uh, members of, of the Bracero program. I was talking to him to congratulate him and the other Braceros who worked so hard. They did so and much. And let's yeah. hope they have more refunds than they have given because yeah. they earned it. They meant to that. They don't give the interest. They don't give them the interest on that money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah round of applause. Huh? Okay. I tell you. That, see, and what people don't realize, the Bracero program was part of the war effort. Yep. See, and they don't see it. Because we don't that have. Point. never put in the history books yeah. about well, what happened during World War II while our soldiers were at war and the women were left here. To do the, the men's work. ex Braceros were the strong arms that did the work that the women in the, f in the fields probably yeah. Yeah. couldn't. Exactly make. right. And that's like I said, that's very much part of the, well, the history. You, you need to uh, maybe elect more Latinos to all the elected offices to be able to uh, uh, explore changing the mindset of the book writers of the ones who f furnish the books to our schools because they're not teaching our kids the history of our country and of our mm -hmm. culture well of course not i mean but it's up to them that we force them to put some of the history that our kids need to learn to be proud of their history and their culture well that's that's we whenever and we talked about this i talked to this with the, the tribal leader here uh, a few weeks back that's a good way to keep people very um self-esteem keep it down pride yeah, because you don't have, once again, another disconnect, if you will, with your own culture. And then the kids are suffering. Well, anybody who is a brown skin sometimes is lesser than. And I beg to differ with anybody who says that because we're just as intelligent and as, as willing to work twice as hard, especially women, to be able to get where we're at. I heard that back there, yeah. All the women right. back there, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is correct. See, so. and I'm not going to argue with that, folks. <laughs> My mom was a woman, okay? So. <laughs> So I go, we go for it, you know, all the way around. Well, that is so fabulous. I see that you have some events. These are the events right here, right? We got, we've right. got. There's uh, a couple of things coming up that I thought maybe you'd be interested in, and sure. they're events that involve the public. Um, uh, the one I have in front of me is the uh, open public briefing on the Superfund site, San Gabriel. It's up here, okay. and it's um, Saturday, March the 8th, from 10 to to 12:30, and it's uh, we don't have a location yet. Okay. Okay, but then you also have. The Mental Health Consortium, this is people who are interested in mental health. It's going to be at City of Hope on Friday, March the 28th, Beautiful. and you can just put it on. Uh, and then on this one, you have uh, the uh, uh, Portable Care Act enrollment, Saturday, February the 15th, 8 to 12, at the Mountain View, and right here in El Monte. Right, very close by, man. Close yeah, up. and then you have uh, over here, uh, uh, provide legal advice, immigration. On Thursday, the September the 25th. Oh, wow. This is like going all the way a whole year's worth, huh? Yeah. Well, really it's just good. some of the things that my staff, and I have the best staff, i got to tell you. Oh, I know. They are dedicated, and they do respond to the general public. That's the air from, yeah. man. They work, they work hard. Great advocate for the mental health, and that's what is new. And I remember last year when we did the woman of the year for, mm -hmm, for your office. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Boy, they were all over us here, and they really helped us a lot. And You know what? Another round of applause, because that was a good effort on their part. That's still coming up. And that was, yeah, and that was really fun. We had a great time. We met so many wonderful nominees here, and it was Weren't just they great. Oh, they were awesome. See, you're running with volunteers. Right. This is exactly what I, I wanted to, to recognize the women who volunteer, who make these organizations thrive, because without them, there would be no extra help to the cities or the churches or other community groups. This is true. This is true. So. I tell you, amazing, you're amazing, Congresswoman. So, any parting shots, any numbers you want to give out that people might want to contact you if they have any sort of input, or is there any other statements that you want to cover? Uh,